the next thing you know is that now, you're in an alternate dimension where a bombshell goddess greets you and smiles. Unfortunately, this isn't a dream so the turntables turn, and the anime goddess informs you that if you don't destroy the gates of the girl beside you then neither her and you can go home, and the world will slowly end due to chaos. Anyways, let's backtrack to earlier this morning so I can tell you guys about the story of Douyin, a legendary hero that must clap to save the world. So today is the first day of Douyin's new school semester where he plans to study hard or else he will no longer receive free Taco Bell money from his parents. It's exactly like me though, he studies for literally 5 minutes and then he convinces himself that it's time for a 2 hour break, so Douyin decides to grab some food. But that within seconds of walking out his house, the lucker dog runs into a sight he couldn't believe as he didn't think it was possible to find someone better looking than Madison Beer. Regardless, Douyin gets graced by an 11 out of 10 only sus girl and you already know bro is going to have a problem trying to hide his banana tree from sprouting faster than the weeds on my lawn. Unfortunately for our boy though, bro gets ignored harder than my one star pulls on Genshin, so she just passes by without even the slightest of glances. But you know what, Douyin doesn't care as he's probably trying to download what he just saw into his brain so he can use it for some alone time later tonight. Now the weird part about of all this is that the random girl gets ganked by a kid on the sidewalk and the boy's head was literally smaller than one of her pyramids. But like a true model waifu, she doesn't mind getting randomly ganked as she's eager to help the kid and wastes no time in helping him find his mother. Nonetheless, as Douyin watches the random girl and kid disappear into the horizon, he decides to go back home to actually try and be productive but he boots up Minecraft instead. Eventually, Bro decides it's time for another break, but as he gets up, he experiences an unusual feeling causing him to hold on tightly to his brand new Herman Miller chair. Mere seconds later, Douyin ends up finding himself flat on the floor, even flatter than the hills on his idol Taylor Swift. But the next time Douyin opens his eyes, the only thing he could see around him is an infinite and endless supply of white and nothing. Bro then gets up hoping that this is just a dream, but much to his horror, he pinches himself, but he doesn't even wake up. So now with the realization that maybe he actually is screwed forever, he tries his hardest to yell out for help, but again, nothing happens. As such, Douyin decides to let one massive one rip since no one can smell it anyways, but just as he thought all hope is lost, a bright flash appears out of nowhere. Then right before the goddess appeared in front of our boy, Douyin falls to his knees as he remembers the nightmare of the phoenix on his team last night, constantly team flashing by accident over and over. Eventually, Douyin reopens his eyes as he gets greeted by a heavenly voice, and let's just say, if I scroll down any more, then we will get banned harder than Tyler won during his prime. Suddenly, another sky flash appeared beside Douyin as the goddess explained that she's about to bring another person here before she could explain everything in detail. But much to his surprise, the bright flash disappeared, but then it left behind the same random girl he encountered from earlier on his procrastinating break. Nevertheless, the girl gets absolutely terrified as she has no idea where she is, plus she's probably never ever watched anime, let alone one about reincarnation or meeting the legendary truck Kun. Eventually, the goddess intervenes and apologizes for rudely teleporting them to her realm, where she explains that she's the universal goddess of peace and stability. Furthermore, she explains that right at this moment, there are people on the brink of extinction and she need their help to achieve peace and prosperity. Now me personally, I've seen too much anime, so if I ever meet a goddess with massive Honkai impacts and half her armor missing in another world, then my sussy senses will be tingling off the charts. Anyways, the goddess continues by opening up some kind of portal to show the two humans an example of what's going on right now, and if they don't help her gain some power, then she will be helpless to save those in need. Regardless, after taking a closer look at the portal, the goddess mentions that the bus is about to tip over at any moment, and there's nothing she can do as she needs to charge up like my Tesla. But for the first time ever, the main character does an admirable move by anxiously asking if the goddess can prove her claims as Bro probably thinks this is just some kind of elaborate prank Bro. Within seconds of Dolian asking for some proof about her claims, all three get teleported to where the bus is about to tip over, but apparently she has no powers by the way. Nonetheless, Dolian looks down at the bus, but then he starts screaming at the top of his lungs since it turns out he's got a severe case of being afraid of heights. As such, she teleports everyone back to her realm, where our boy is able to finally catch his breath as Bro almost had an accident in his brand new pants. Anyways, now that everything is sorted and both Douyin and the random girl started to believe the words of the goddess, the goddess ends up lowering her head and apologizes once again. Suddenly, the random girl that could be a billionaire on OnlySus.com pipes up and asks the goddess what they can do to help, since she really wants to make sure everyone is safe before it's too late. However, just as the two randoms thought they were about to go on a quest, the goddess slowly reveals that she wants them to do some rice cake smashing to save those in danger. 
At the same time, we finally learn that the random girl on the street is named Gia, but upon learning of what our boy needs to do, Bro gets flustered as he can't fathom what he just heard since surely, this must be the biggest prank ever. Now let's be real here boys, Doem is 1069% down with the plan, but we already know Bro is going to try and act like it's the worst plan ever. Anyways, as Doyeon stays quiet, poor girl Gia starts going off on the goddess, where she complains that this doesn't even make sense at all. And don't worry girl, this ain't making sense to me either, but all I know is that Doyeon is living the dream. Regardless, the goddess apologizes to Gia and tells her that she can't really explain the power of God, but if they go through with it, then she can be a hero baby. The goddess then continues to profusely apologize to the two while gaslighting them harder than the true man show where she begs them to save the people, as she can't bear the weight on her shoulders without being able to help. Now I will go ahead and say what you all are thinking, heck yeah, you would agree to her demands if you were Doyen right now, and honestly, if I was Gia, and I could save the world, screw it, why not? However, just as I thought the sussy fire nation was about to show up with their body-bending attacks, small brain Doyen pipes up by asking what would happen if they decide not to go through with her demands. It was at this very moment Bro knew he screwed up, as the angelic voice from the goddess gets replaced by a demonic one claiming that she will keep them in her realm until they listen to her. Upon hearing her drastic voice and demeanor change, an otherworldly sensation is sent tingling through Doyen's spine, causing him to be more scared than all those Do fruit spammers. So now Doyen and Jia is left with no choice, and I feel like Jia got the short end of the stick, unless Doyen happens to be hiding a behemoth down under he's about to call the king. But truth be told, as Doyen acts like he's more pressed than Chris from Mr. Beast, he turns to Jia and slyly asks, why not just consider her demands? Unfortunately, Jia still doesn't want to do it with him, so Bro decides to up the stakes and mention how if they don't do it, then everyone on the bus will perish, including the young ones who deserve nothing less, and there's no way he can live with himself afterwards. Nevertheless, Jia takes a few minutes to contemplate on whether or not it's worth it, even if it seems like this is just a setup, but whilst remembering the people on the bus, she gives in and she's truly the angelic one rather than the goddess. Upon hearing her agree, Doyeon's banana tree plantation instantly activates Harden, causing him to promptly try his best to hide his excitement. Jia then continues on and explains that they just need to get it out of the way, because they have no choice and she might as well be Sydney Sweeney to save the world. So now that both have agreed upon the goddess's terms, our boy turns back to the goddess and confirms with her if they do it right this moment, then she will whisk them back to where they came from and she will be able to finally use her powers for good. And so the two get ready on a makeshift bed. But it turns out Bro is about to experience his first ever rice cake smashing, so he starts profusely sweating. However, it's now revealed that the goddess added some terms to the agreement where both of them have to end up reaching the climax of the mountain or else it doesn't count, and they need to keep going. So who do you guys think is more sussy here, the goddess or our Bro since this is crazy? Anyways, Bro is quick to action once Gia tells him that she is ready, so without any more hesitation, Doyeon is like, ready or not, here I come. Initially, Jia wanted to play peekaboo, so she kept her eyes closed waiting for the ordeal to finish, but she couldn't help herself so she peeked harder than my boy Tom when Doyeon unequipped her legendary pieces of armor. Meanwhile, our boy is like, is this really happening right now, because if he ends up waking any moment, then bro will be super sad for a very long time. However, right before Doyeon uses his dragon fruit to blast his mission into success phase, bro mentions to Jia not to worry, as he will try his best to use his triple dark blade to make her reach the climax of Mount Jia. But then, at this very moment, Doyeon realized he didn't even open his mouth to speak, but Jia understood him, causing him to realize he has somehow gained telepathic powers. Needless to say, the rest was history, where it's also revealed that a bombshell like Jia has never experienced rice cake destroying before either, so Doyeon lucked out in more ways than one. So long story short, Bro started to identify as the ultimate attack helicopter, while Gia used Niagara Falls as her pronouns due to how splashing the waterfall was. And after successfully completing the hardest mission ever known to man, the goddess flies up into the sky and thanks the two whilst looking like the most sussy Megabaka ever, full of smiles and a massive glowing aura. She then bows down before them thanking them a million times, claiming that without their help she would have never been saved. Unfortunately for Doyeon, Gia interrupts the goddess while she was busy trying to cosplay an angel in distress, ordering the goddess to teleport her back to where she came from. As such, the goddess complies with her demands so she whips out her right arm, looking like she's about to send a Rasengan towards them. But instead, a massive beam of light began to engulf them. At the same time, Doyeon attempts to evade the beam as he secretly wanted his second try at breaching Jia's narrow doors, but his reactions were too slow, and so Brooke gets snapped back to reality, 
where he finds himself back on the floor with Hella drool encumbering his face underneath. He then runs to the closest mirror, hoping that everything was real, but Bro has no idea if it was just a dream or not, or maybe his sus self has finally overtaken his physical form. Eventually, Doyim comes to the realization that if everything did happen, then he can ask Gia if he ever runs into her again. But he begins to worry about the Popo -po coming as his mega sussy evolution was a little bit too much. Nevertheless, Bro decides to act like nothing ever happened, so he calls up a friend to go eat some Korean food as he's hungrier than Matt Stoney. As he begins talking about playing Valorant with his buddy, it dawns on him that he totally forgot about his assignment that was due yesterday. But then, as he starts freaking out in the restaurant, his gaze randomly stops at a nearby TV where there's breaking news about a bus miraculously being saved out of nowhere. The story continues with Doe Yun freezing up harder than the Eskimos in Canada as he starts to realize that everything wasn't just a dream. Then after taking a moment to take it all in, Doe Yun sits back down as he's starting to arise suspicion from his friend who's starting to think that Doe Yun beat the Ironwood too much today. However, our boy is a smart man so he pieces two and two together and remember that Jia attends the same school as his friend, so he starts vigorously questioning him about her. It's then revealed that pretty much every guy knows about her as she's a goddess in their school, especially since someone with such huge Honkai impacts happens to be single. With his friend now riled up talking about her, he stops for a moment and brings back the conversation to a halt as Bro began to tease Doyen instead, making fun of him for actually being interested in someone. But before the two were able to continue talking about Jia, Doyen's friend leaves him hanging as he realizes he's late for class, so he dips like he's peppercorn ranch. Nevertheless, shortly after devouring his leftover delicious Korean fried chicken, our boy heads back home to investigate more about the news he saw earlier. Upon further investigation, Doyum confirmed online that everything that happened with the bus was factually real, even the fact that everyone made it out alive miraculously. As such, he jumps straight into his bed super happy that he yucked a rice cake smash Gia for real, but he starts thinking about the goddess as she's way too sussy for being a goddess. But whilst thinking of the goddess, Doyun suddenly gets ganked by a tremor overtaking his mind causing him to tightly clutch one side of his head, but the pain would not go away. Eventually, the pain subsides but our boy finds himself teleported to the world of the goddess again. This time though, he's glad his big cushions soften the blow all thanks to not skipping leg day. Regardless, much to Doyan's surprise, he ends up making eye contact with Jia again, only for him to stare at Jia with her clothes totally invisible all thanks to his boy Harry, and let's just say Bro was astonished at Jia's all-around figure. It's then revealed that while Doyan got teleported busy being chilling in his bed, Jia on the other hand, she got teleported while she was busy in the middle of her water-bending shower. Of course, our bro doesn't care about anything else right now other than trying to stop his mountain from fully showing as he can't help himself due to Jia's alluring invisible looks. Luckily for him though, his attention gets redirected to the opposite side of the room as the goddess finally decided to interrupt them to say hello. The goddess then began walking towards the two, while simultaneously glowing more and more the closer she got, but she thanks them profusely for helping her regain her powers. Things then take an obvious sussy turn, as the powerful goddess beckoned them closer only for her to transform into Bernie Sanders, as she once again calls upon them to help her save the rest of the world due to her inadequacies. As such, Jia absolutely gets frustrated again, so she attempts to get Doyin to back her up against the goddess, but we all know Bro is secretly loving every moment. Nonetheless, with Jia asking Doyin to say something, our boy tries his hardest to fight back against his sussy demons, as he literally has no problem with destroying Jia's rice cakes just to save the world. So unfortunately for Jia, our boy ends up losing to his demons, so he just shrugs and goes along with the goddess, claiming the fact that they should just listen to her if they want to get back to Earth. And with no choice other than to go along with the goddess's wishes, Jia reluctantly allows our boy to ask the goddess who needs saving this time, causing the tip of the goddess's twin pyramids of Giza to randomly get super rock hard upon learning of their choice. After smiling from ear to ear, the goddess whips out her wrecking ball of the future, and shows a ruthless man looking like he's about to rack up his cod kill streak in real life. She then continues on and shows how a random yet innocent girl will want to stop his streak from starting, and she will for sure perish on the spot for doing so. As such, the goddess mentions how the woman does not deserve this, nor does anyone unlucky enough to be in his path, but apparently, her powers right now aren't letting her stop the entire ordeal from happening. But with her help doing some good old rice cake destroying in front of her, then her powers will be free to stop the man from trying to take a single stock as Bayonetta from anyone around. This time, however, the goddess reveals that her powers can only be freed with the condition that Jia makes Doyun's banana tree gush like an act of Yellowstone. So now, our boy cannot get any luckier, as he's about to save multiple people, just by standing still. 
So without further ado, Jia puts on some knee pads and goes to town by ripping open her target prize to save the world. But she gets shocked at the reveal of his two-handed sword. Originally, she hesitates as she's never ate a subway larger than a foot long. But with Earth on the line and multiple people about to get clapped by a Joker one-trick pony, she starts her attack. She then starts the one versus one duel by treating his Excalibur as some fire sticks that need to get rubbed together really fast to make fire, causing our boy to get flustered. Dobium then tries his hardest to keep his banana-flavored bubble tea to not spill, as he wants Jia to personally taste his special flavor so if he lets Jia know she's going to need to do more than fire stick rubbing to fulfill the agreement. As such, to help her out, our boy tells him that she needs to combo her hand attacks by sneaking in full-mouth quick attacks to make sure they can hit the finish line. And so they complete the mission after Doyun could not hold back his horses anymore, but the goddess appears out of nowhere and apologizes as she claims that they need to go again as that round didn't count. After hearing from the goddess that they need to do a redo, Jia gets totally upset and claims it isn't fair. But our boy sits there silently as he's absolutely relieved he can continue going. As such, he's unable to stop his hand from involuntarily reaching out, so Doyun ends up bringing Jia tightly close to him so he could convince her to go again, as the world needs them to give the goddess powers to save the world. He's then able to actually convince her, as he reminds her it's time for their weekly clash and premiere tournaments, so they agree to the goddess's demands. Now with round 2 underway, Jia turns back around and questions our boy if he can really explode again, as bro just erupted literally seconds before. But thanks to Jia being a modern Aphrodite, our boy proudly says of course as he's trained for this very moment and hopes he could have bagged an 11 out of 10. And so the second battle begins with Dogen falling flat on the ground as this time the two plan for Jia to take charge even more as it's time for her to mount his e-bike straight to victory. Anyways, it was a very long and intense battle where it was clearly back and forth from both sides as fierce body bending techniques were introduced. Eventually, the first one to come out of the battle experiencing some post pine that's clarity is actually Jia, as she could not contain the beast inside her ring. Then, after Jia combusted two more times, the goddess interfered like a referee inside the octagon, as our boy finally got to the finish line. Regardless, the goddess thanks them for their cooperation but informs the two that unfortunately in the future, she might need to call upon their help again, so she apologizes in advance. Upon hearing the revelation that the goddess might continue calling them back over and over to save the world, Jia has had enough so she breaks down and tells her to please pick someone else to save the world. Jia then pleads for her to pick someone else that would be into such a thing, and not her. But the goddess refuses to say anything. In the end, the goddess continues her vow of silence, but she proceeds to abide by some of Jia's wishes, so she sent Jia back to Earth by raising her palm. And just like that, poof goes the weasel leaving Doyen to fall on the ground where Jia was last seen, where the dimension almost looks like a brand new Jubilee episode. With Doyen facing the wrath of the Earthbenders again, the goddess does what she does best by apologizing profusely for not giving him a heads up that she was about to send Jia back to Earth, causing him to touch grass. However, Ro doesn't mind too much as he thoroughly enjoyed the past hour, all thanks to this sussy goddess, who ends up thanking him for his cooperation to save the world. Nevertheless, after thanking our boy for all his deeds, she raises her right arm to send him back to his room, but Doyen pipes up and tells her to wait a single moment. This time, Doyen actually asks her straight up why she's doing this and questions her if she actually wants to save people as he's only seen cultured anime and people like her are never this much of a sussy baka. But the goddess shyly looks away and pulls off a perfect politically correct response by totally avoiding his question, as she only mentions that all humans can avoid death. However, she continues by looking like she took some Hollywood and Korean drama classes, so she starts tearing up a little bit and claims she wants to stop the evil hearts of others whom are trying to force tragic circumstances on others. And the only way she could do that is with the help of both of them, so that's why she's trying her best to gain enough power to save everyone in need. But then Doyen responds by asking the question everyone has on their mind, so he asks why they have to rice cake smash for her to gain power. But the goddess just turns around and refuses to answer the question by claiming that she can't explain the authority of God to humans as it's forbidden. So she just flashes her fresh subway buns to distract him from the truth. So with no answers being told, our boy tries again with a different question and asks her why does it have to be specifically Jia and him, when there's literally billions of people on Earth. Upon hearing his second question, the goddess quickly turned back around and started to look like an even bigger sussy backup by showing off her double broccolis to Doyen, where she explains that she picked them due to their compatibilities. Our bro then gets stunlocked as he didn't expect her to choose him and Jia just because the goddess wanted to be some kind of messed up cupid. 
Regardless, the goddess apologizes again for not being able to reveal more as it's apparently not her duty, but she begs him that if she ever needs help again, then she will call upon his massive vanquisher. As such, our boy takes a few seconds to contemplate her request, but he quickly agrees again as he has no problem activating his attack helicopter. So he asks if she could send him back to his world. So fast forward an hour later back in Doyan's reality, our boy gets pumped that he can continue being the pumping man. But then, the turntables turn as Doyan continues to head out of his apartment only for him to stop in his tracks with disbelief in his eyes. After blinking a couple times to make sure he isn't dreaming again, Doyan finally realizes that the girl in front of him is literally who he thinks it is. It was at this moment Bro knew he's been playing too much Destiny 2, as the strike he conquered earlier happens to live right beside his apartment. A flashback then occurs to where it's revealed that not only does Jia's mom got buns of steel like Superman, but she got the yapping skills of a stepmom since she continually puts down Jia by calling her useless and to just get out of her way. She even goes as far as telling Jia to go be a dead rat, especially from New York City, even though she's never done anything wrong in her life, so her mom is just a hater for no reason. Ever since then, Jia vowed to live life and succeed without ever needing the help of her mom, as she knows she can achieve whatever she wants to gain power so she can eventually show her mom who the true boss is. Now most of her life without her parents, she's actually been super successful just because she's built like a dump truck with advanced Milky Way galaxies, but now she's stumbled on her first ever real problem. Ever since the Day of Reckoning came when the goddess teleported her to a mysterious world, the brand new papayas she's been cultivating all her life have encountered the problem of meaning maintenance through the use of a stranger's banana tree. So now she's evolved into a sussy baka even though she's never planned for that to happen, and now the only thing she can think of is Doyan's mythical dough fruit. Back to the present, after getting ganked by Doyan in her own apartment lobby, she stumbles upon her words after the first thing her eyes locks onto is literally Doyan's diamond sword since that's the only thing her mind has been stuck on all night. But just as we thought Bro was about to get lucky, Jia unexpectedly slaps down a piece of paper, but Bro absolutely despises doing anything related to work. However, the sussy turn tables turn upon Doyan's jaw dropping as he discovers the piece of paper is a legally binding contract between the two created by Jia asking him to continue destroying her runway in secret, and all he needs to do is sign it. She then tells him that as long as he keeps to the promise of racking up sussy time with her secretly as told by the contract, then all will be fine. Regardless, Jia insists on Doyan to sign the piece of paper since she's worried he might tell his boys putting her reputation at risk, plus the goddess can call them back at any moment for another round of rice cake destroying. Now speaking of getting sent back to the sussy world, Jia is totally fine with her dump truck getting demolished by his train as long as they try their hardest to quickly finish the entire ordeal. Of course, Doyan quickly agrees to her proposition as he doesn't want to lose the chance to save the world, but he's more so unwilling to miss out on giving Jia her fill of his custard cream on her Mars bar. Suddenly, just as the two were busy talking about wanting to quickly finish putting his cheese hot ovens on her toasted buns in the sussy world, they end up getting teleported by the goddess. Unfortunately for Jia though, today is Sussy Taco Tuesday, so the goddess has already become more sus than before, so she ends up informing them that this time she needs Doyan to make sure Jia reaches the climax of the mountain twice. As such, Jia quickly refuses as none of this even makes sense, but secretly, we all know she's looking forward to it as Jia has been wanting some needed maintenance on her personal toolbox. Nevertheless, the powerful sus god bows before them and apologizes for the sudden increase in intense activities, since this time she needs extra power to prevent even more people from disappearing into the abyss. It's then revealed that this time, the person they are saving is some poor old chap that owns a restaurant by day and by night he's basically an Uber driver. The goddess mentions that the man is a really nice guy that even gives out free meals to those in need, but this time he's going to perish like old cheese, as there's going to be an accident. While listening to the goddess make excuses, Doyun wonders why this goddess seemingly can do anything like teleport them, but stopping a car is too much to handle, when she can also just change his fate that day. Nonetheless, Doyun forces himself to not say anything and to go along with the flow like a true supreme sussy baka so he can keep full diving straight into Jio's garden. Even just thinking about being able to blast away his rocket straight into her launch pad has now caused his banana tree to become fully grown, so Bro whips out his starter drill. Unbeknownst to him though, Jia plans for this next duel to be the hardest one for Doyan and the goddess to succeed in, as she's going to try her hardest not to make her waterfall part like the Red Sea twice in a row. But within seconds of the duel starting and upon Doyan unboxing her Xbox, Bro gets flabbergasted as he's never seen a gaming console as soaked as hers before. Still like a true cultured man, he boots up her console and proceeds to connect his controller deep within her Xbox's sussy ports. 
Mere seconds later, Doyim gets frustrated as Jia refuses to complete the mission as fast as they can, and his banana tree is going to explode before she even gets to the first climax of the mountain. Luckily, the past few days, Doyin has been XP wasting on C3 since he's been busy grinding something else by himself at night in real life, just so he can endure the tight quarter fights of Jia. Eventually, Doyin's extreme level up from all this grinding has proved to be effective as Jia's hair comes loose from the intense ripples coming from Doyin's supreme domain expansion, causing her to finally lose the battle once. And just like the Drakely, Jia quickly loses the second battle shortly after the first as Doyin came equipped with brand new abilities to cause his opponent to go wild. After completing their double battle condition where Jia must lose twice, they get teleported back home where Jia can't believe that she lost so easily after trying so hard not to lose. Regardless, she's super disappointed with herself but she also can't stop thinking about the past since she never expected that she had it within her to tremble so hard twice within 5 minutes. So now she's making a new promise to get herself together and to act without feelings so she can instantly lose the battle next time if needed as there's no time to waste. Fast forward the next day, Doyim gets caught drooling by his friends since he's been stuck thinking about his epic sussy adventure last night. Although he denies that he's not thinking about anything right now, his friend knows that something is up since he's glowing the most he's ever been, which is truly odd as bro is always busy sweating in his comp matches. After putting three and three together, his friend wonders if he got a girlfriend or something, which instantly causing Doyim to be defensive as he wants to keep the title of the single king simp. Regardless, since his friend finds out that he's been single all this time due to him gaming way too much, he offers to set him up with a girl he knows but Doyim refuses by claiming that he's busy writing, but we all know he don't do anything other than be sussy. With his friend nowhere to be seen after heading off to class, Bro randomly hears someone yelling for help so he looks up and notices a blonde Margaret Robbie. At this point, Bro basically won the lottery with all his luck since he's the only one around, so it seems like girls have started to rain upon this Minecraft Chad. Regardless, Doyun comes to the rescue for the damsel in distress causing her balloons to jiggle jiggle at folds, but the real question is how the heck did she get up there in the first place? With the blondie continually thanking Doyun like her life depends on it, the supreme sussy Baka says nothing and just stares causing him to almost fall in love since while thinking she might be a K-pop idol trainee. However, Bro finally snaps out of it after flashes of Gio went through his mind looking like a peeled banana, so he ends up asking her why she even climbed the pole. Her response was that she was praying to God. But this dumb blondie thought the higher up you are, the better she might have been heard even though she could have just hopped on an elevator in a nearby building. Nevertheless, Dolian begins to think she's crazy, and that this must have been a setup for him to go to church by using perfect blondes near you to act as bait. As such, Dolian doesn't want to put a tender, juicy hot dog on a crazy vanilla donut, so he tries his best to go on his way, but she's way more persistent than my bottom no calm sage. Eventually, Doyun had enough of the crazy conversation he's having so he tells her that he's a reincarnated demon lord and runs away as fast as he could, but she doesn't mind and waves a hearty goodbye. Let's time skip to Nightfall where we find Doyun actually trying to study, but upon further investigation, Bro is actually playing Warzone on his laptop. He then hears unexpected knocks on his door at midnight while he tries to clutch for the boys, so he goes prone to Bush to check on who's trying to disturb him. To Doyan's surprise, he finds out that it's actually Jia who's wearing armor that can't even support her double twin dragon so it's just out there, causing his banana tree to instantly ripen like magic. Of course, Doyan quickly forgets about the boys as his own lil bro came out to play ready to rumble, so he lets Jia in without any hesitation. Unfortunately for our bro though, his hopes and dreams get shattered when Jia spills the beans, telling him that the reason she's here is because she wants him to forget about everything that happened. And like an ex breaking your heart, she just has no hard feelings while Doyin tries his best to act like it doesn't affect him to look strong on the outside, but we all know he's clearly ugly crying inside. After acting tough like Jake Paul, Jia happily leaves knowing that there isn't any misunderstandings between the two but Doyin is left behind, wishfully thinking that he was about to get a girlfriend tonight. Nonetheless, Doyin heads back to drop a 40 bomb on Valor to avenge his pride after getting rejected, only to get demoted but luck is on his side again after he gets teleported back to Sussy Land. This time, however, the goddess tells them that she wishes to fulfill the desires of both of them at the same time. So now my Sussy senses are tingling more than ever. Mere seconds later, an entire bunny girl outfit appears and engulfs Jia. So you might as well call her my for my bunny girl senpai, but Jia do be looking better no cap. With Jia now fully transformed into Doyen's ideal type, she calls him a pervy sage apprentice but Bro doesn't seem to mind as he's already thinking of all the ways he's about to dunk his ball straight into the open net. 
Lilith then gets distracted from his dreams when the goddess pulls out a shiny hourglass, so the sussy master informs them that this is Doyen's wish, so Jia must grant it for her to regain powers to save the world. On the other hand, Jia's wish is for Doyen to destroy her train cart and ravage the rails it's on, so I guess it's equally even for these sussy bakas. Anyways, the goddess poofs into the air after urging them to hurry, as she needs to regain her powers and abilities as soon as possible, even though she just used them to literally teleport away. Sheikan decides to move the two on top of a triple king-size bed from a billion miles away, causing them to plop down on the bed faster than I can plop down a deuce. Now that the two are alone in a perfect area to do some rice cake destroying, the only thing Doyim can think of is fulfilling his life-long dreams as all he needs to do now is to whip out the rocket to go blasting like Jesse and James.